Active aerodynamics on a remote control car? Seriously? Yes. If I change the pitch of the car, the wing will self level. So for example, if I'm going 50 miles an hour and this thing tries to pop a wheelie, the wing's gonna flatten out so that it doesn't just catch wind, fly in the air and break into a million tiny pieces. And if you're wondering why I would overcomplicate something like this so much, it's because I've got a lot of experience with this thing catching air at 50 miles an hour and breaking into a bunch of little pieces. It all started when I was filming part two of the speedrun wheelie bar series, the one where I talk about prescribed displacement. So right out of the gate, I had a blowout and it just flipped the car over and I had to go back home, get a new set of tires and swap the tires right there in the parking lot. I love wasting time by the way. And in my arrogance, I still thought things were gonna work out perfect. So I give it a few warm up runs and then we were off for a top speed run. What the? It still pulls a wheelie when I've designed such a perfect wheelie bar? <laughs> then it finally clicked. I designed this thing based on the static car dimensions and tested mostly at slower speeds. But these tires actually balloon like crazy when you get up to speed, which increases the effective tire diameter that changes the wheelie bar relative geometry and allows it to lift the front end up again. And once you lift the front end, air catches it and you lose all control and you can't even steer because the front wheels aren't on the ground. So here we are with active aerodynamics on a remote control car. Normal people just add weight to the front of the car, but that makes way too much sense. Instead, I added a gyro module that senses angular change and sends feedback to the servo at the front of the car to change the angle of attack of the wing relative to the chassis. And the front wing itself is actually bolted to the servo with a GoPro style mount because that makes it wonderfully easy to change the angle of attack from the initial setting and also to swap wings in the extremely unlikely event that I break one. And this system is fully self-contained. The gyro module and servo both run on its own small six volt battery. So I don't have to worry about pulling from the LiPo. Now I will talk about the technical details of the design of this wing itself, but I absolutely cannot wait to get testing. So let's get at it. And the first thing we're gonna do is revisit our leaf blower test that I did in a prior aerodynamics video. And all I'm doing here is the checking to make sure that when I apply a high velocity airflow, the front of the car actually starts to squat, indicating that it is getting downforce. Yep, we're good to go on that test. So this is what a normal launch looks like with the wheelie bar and about the correct setting. Um, and this is what it's gonna look like full speed. So you can see how quick it has to respond. Now, if I start to raise the wheelie bar a little bit, it still responds really well and it'll level itself out no problem. But if I start to raise that wheelie bar a lot higher and I go hard on the brakes, I can plow it into the grass. And if you totally forget to tighten the front wing itself, it just folds right under the car. At this point, I am all warmed up and I'm feeling comfortable enough to get out there go back to the speed runs. I'm a little worried about the front end having too much grip and causing it to oversteer, but obviously not worried enough to not do it. You can call me stupid. Yes, you can call me sheep. You can say I lay a seat. You can say I need. And right out of the gate, I forgot to tighten the front wing again. Now, luckily it didn't do much damage. It just scraped it up a little bit. And so I could just simply flatten it out, clean it up and tighten it down. And I was ready for more runs. With a quick function check of the front wing to make sure it's working, I was ready to go for a full grip of throttle. So that didn't go at all as planned because right at this point, since the back end had positively no grip, it kicked out and beelined it straight into the curb. I even included this incredibly zoomed in max footage so you could hear the most satisfying crunch ever. 
You could have probably guessed by now, but slamming into a curb at that speed is definitely going to do some damage, which means our day is going to end early. And there you have it, a stunning display of failure. Um, so time to move on to bigger and better things. Just kidding, I haven't actually given up on this yet, actually. I had to order a ton of new parts for the front end, obviously, and some for the back end. Shocks are busted, and some of these camber links. Anyways, those are gonna take a long time to come in, and I didn't wanna wait to put out this video because there's a lot of cool, fun stuff that still comes with this video. So let's go ahead and move on to some of the technical stuff and see how I designed this front wing. Now, obviously, I am running a multi-element wing, and I'm using a multi-element wing because it allows me to run a higher effective angle of attack, before the flow separates. Because when flow separates, we get a low pressure region at the back of the wing that's much larger than normal and creates a ton of drag. And drag is not a good thing with cars because it slows them down and consumes more energy for a given speed. An extreme example of this would be driving with a parachute behind your car. That's gonna obviously create way more drag than a wing, but you get the concept, right? The technical term of what I'm looking for is a high lift to drag ratio, and I can use a software called multi-element airfoils to figure this out. It's the exact same software that I used in my prior video for adding downforce to an RC car. I have explored a few different wing profiles, but I'm gonna stick with the NACA 5512 that I had a lot of success with last time, except I'm gonna increase the camber to 6% and the thickness to 14%. And this is based on a recommendation from my favorite aerodynamics book for race cars by Simon McBeef. I'm setting the first wing to only two inches with a negative five degree angle of attack. And the second wing is half that at one inch and a minus 25 degree angle of attack. And I'm just roughly positioning these to attempt to get close to an optimum position. After that, I'll set up the flow conditions and the wingspan. In this case, I wanna understand what's going on above 45 miles an hour. Because if I get too much downforce, it's actually gonna push the suspension down all the way to the ground, and I really want to avoid that. We saw that in testing, but I was running at a much higher air velocity than I'll actually drive at. And after that, I just look at the potential flow results to see expected downforce and a couple of other variables like lift coefficient, drag coefficient, and things like that. In the case of this guy, it's predicting two whole pounds of downforce, which is a lot for a four pound car. But I'm gonna take these numbers as rough estimates because this isn't a full 3D based CFD solver. So it's more of an approximation. Regardless, we're close enough to the range that I want. So I'm ready to export a DXF, get it into Fusion 360 and start 3D printing. Now, obviously if I were doing this again, there's a few things I would probably change. Number one, I would add a wing on the back so that it's actually aerodynamically balanced instead of just all the downforce being on the front, which causes it to oversteer really easily. Number two, I would probably be a better driver, right? My whole design goal with this was to be able to just mash a throttle and not even have to look where it's going. I just wanted it to stay planted and it also has some active steering feedback based on gyros. So I was really hoping it would all kind of work itself out and I could just go for speed. Number three, curbs are not my friend. But overall, I actually was happy that one, I was able to produce downforce, actually a reasonable amount of downforce, and two, the active aero actually worked. It maintained level pretty well. Now this is something you obviously wouldn't use off-roading or in a rough course because you're gonna be limited by how fast the servo can respond itself. Now I can tune those settings, but it was never designed for off-road. It was actually only designed for uh, speed runs on a smooth road surface. In my first video on aerodynamics, you could actually see that the wings were mounted really high, and that was because I did not want them to be sensitive to bumps and stuff like that. And that's all I have for today. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. And as always, leave a comment, like, subscribe. It definitely helps me out, and I look forward to the next video.